Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video. And in this video, I have three separate enhanced summon tests and I do test a speed bump. And like I said in my previous video, Tesla is only testing the optical system, seeing if the car can get from one point to another without hitting anything or anyone. So these tests here that you're about to see are only meant to see if the car is able to navigate through a parking lot around curbs, around medians, and other obstacles in its way. Let's jump right into test number one. So test number one, we put a target point further down in the parking lot, and you can see that it's pulling out of the spot here, and it actually picks up speed rather quickly before it slows down, and you're gonna see this little hesitation and I'm not sure what that is, and that's probably the optical system picking up something. You can see right here that we have a speed bump coming up, and it really does a great job identifying that it's a speed bump and just rolling right through. You can see just by the speed in this way the car is moving that it's moving more confidently in the environment. So I'm sure it got some much needed upgrade with this new version four of this enhanced summon software. So the test has been complete and you can see that we actually put it to that parking spot that it's sitting uh, right in front of where the nose is. It did pull right up to the target spot and it was able to get to the target successfully. So I wanna go back and show you this again how quickly this car is pulling out and moving its way down to the target spot. And you can see that little hesitation there before it takes this speed bump like a boss, but it moved very confidently all the way down to the target spot, which was placed right there in that parking spot. So it did get all the way to the target spot. Now, again, like I said previously, before you guys put a comment down below, this car is not designed yet to pull into that parking spot. It's only testing the optics to see if it can go through the parking lot to a particular point. So here is test number two, and we are going to wait for this one car to pass just because we don't want that to interfere with the test. That lady was definitely giving us some weird looks. Okay, so let's initiate the summon and you're gonna see the mirror stay folded in. We're gonna get some blinking lights on the front and the back of the vehicle before it goes into reverse. Okay, so the point that we set is kind of behind where you see the camera pointing. So it's directly behind me who is filming this. Beautiful maneuver here done by the autopilot system where it reverses and then turns back up to where it needs to go to its target. I mean, just a phenomenal job. You can see it goes a little bit slow through here with the shadows and where they have two medians on the side before it really picks up speed to head all the way up to the parking lot uh, to get to its target point. So you can see that target point is that last parking spot right before that last median. And so I think that's why we have this hesitation. I think the car saw the curb there and so it throws the reverse lights on, goes into reverse a little bit and then pulls forward just again. So I think as soon as the nose of the car is in the target spot, it throws on the brakes and says summon complete. So you can see the nose was in that target spot. So that's why it said summon complete. So that was really impressive. This newest version of Enhanced Summon is moving very confidently through a parking lot. Right after it reverses before this turn, it slows down just a hair because of these shadows here, as you can see on the asphalt, and it moving through these double medians. If you noticed in my last test, in my last video, where it transitioned from an asphalt to a brick, it was very hesitant because I think the texture in the road was different. So the car had to think a little bit harder about what was a drivable surface and what was not a drivable surface. But if we go back to test number two, and from this video, you can see that we're only working with asphalt today, so there's no texture going from brick to asphalt. And with that, the only thing that the car has to kind of work through here slightly, you can see it slow down ever so slightly, is this shadow from that tree casted right on the asphalt. So now let's jump into test number three. So this is gonna be the longest test. We're taking this test all the way to the other side 
Right after this test, I'm going to show this test one more time with the app view of this test here. So stay tuned for that. And you can see it's backing up here and then realizes that it has a lot of space in the front. So it's just going to turn the wheel to the right and it's going to loop around the parking lot here and not something a regular driver would do. I guess if I was driving here, I would have just reversed a little bit more. But again, this software system is just identifying open space to drive and can it get to its target point. So we have that same speed bump coming up here and the car is hesitating a little bit. I think it's because it came at an angle. So you can see it starts to back up and then head straight, I guess, to get a better view of it, and then decides to go back to the left, away from that shadow. I'm not sure if that's playing a role in it, or if this car is thinking that the speed bump is a curb in that shadow, but ultimately it does figure it out, and it's able to overcome this obstacle. So real impressive here. So it starts to cruise down. We have the target point set all the way down there near the white Model 3 and it hesitates right here, and I don't see anything on the asphalt why it's hesitating other than this bike on the back of this red car right on the left side of the screen. So as it starts to approach the target point, you can see it slow down, which the target point is set uh, one parking spot away from where the white Model 3 is parked, which is my Model 3. And so it says summon complete here because the nose is within the target point. I want to take a look at test number three again, but this time in the bottom right hand side of the screen, I'm going to show you what the app view looks like. So when you initiate the summon and you set the target point, the car is going to figure out where it can drive and you can see that blue line kind of coming from that red triangle, which is the Model 3 here, and the target point, which is that little thing that kind of looks like a crosshairs. That blue dot you see is just the user who is using the app. That's just your phone's location. Very impressive how this system can draw a line from point to point through a parking lot like this, where we have multiple medians mixed in, and it's able to drive around these and also identify, even though it does hesitate here, it does, is it able to identify that this is just a speed bump and it does ultimately overcome this. So you can see that blue line on the app screen where it's kind of figuring out, okay, yep, this is my best course of travel in this situation. And so this target point stays constant, but that blue line is constantly changing as the car, I think, is feeding information from its optical system in. And now we do have that other little hesitation here. I'm not sure if that's from the ultrasonic sensors picking up those cars, letting the car know it needs to slow down. It might be close to something before it speeds right back up. And here's you're going to get a good picture of where once the nose of the Model 3 is in that target point, it's going to stop the summon and it says summon complete, as you can see there. So I want to take a quick look back at a couple points of test number three. So first off, driving through the parking lot like this typically isn't done. I think it decided to do this because the parking lot was empty and it, again, it's just looking at drivable space. Can I drive there? Yes, I can. Okay, let's take that route instead. Now in test number one, you saw it take the speed bump like a boss, rolled right over, was able to identify. Test number three was a little bit different, very hesitant but it was able to solve the problem. I wanna point out something in the app view that I saw was new also. It's gonna show you down here at the bottom whether the car is in park, reverse, or drive. So you can see here the car is in drive. That could definitely come in handy in a tight parking spot where you think the car is gonna go into drive, but it is actually in reverse, so you can stop the summon. It's a great idea giving the user more information about the vehicle right from the app. I hope we see more of that soon. So some of these tests are really long, but I think how this is actually gonna be used in the real world is, let's say you're parked where that red arrow is and you're waiting under this awning with your family and it's pouring down rain. So we'll just pretend that it's raining. And this is like maybe 40, 50 feet. And this is going to be the typical use case. It's gonna be a much shorter summon where your car is in the parking lot and you're waiting under this awning when it's 
raining, pouring down hard, and you just back the car up as close as you can get it, and then your entire family jumps right in, saving you from walking it all the way across the parking lot when it's pouring down rain. I think this is the typical use case for Enhanced Summon. Now, I also think that people with disabilities are gonna be able to utilize this in lots of different ways for mobility issues. If haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really helps a lot just by hitting that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up also. If you know somebody else who's interested in Enhanced Summon, share this video with them. I wanna give a huge shout out to all of you over on Patreon. It is huge and awesome that you're supporting me over there. Our man Amin and Akram Atul, thank you so much for supporting me at the all electric level. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. When you see another Tesla on the road and you're engaged in autopilot, the proper way to wave to them is with two hands waving frantically when you see the other Tesla.